So it's a full on wheelchair accessible on that side. And then you. And like, what is this? So today I'm going to be talking about all the things that kind of suck or at least are annoying about living in Uruguay. <sighs> another video or if you're new here then welcome my name is Maddie and just over 10 months ago me and my well, now husband moved from Australia to Uruguay and we've been documenting the journey here on this channel so if you're interested in going back and watching any of the old vlogs about moving experience stuff like that also our video all about the last or our first six months in the country I'll have them linked down below go check them out if you're interested and last week I made a video on this channel all about the things I love about living in Uruguay. So if you're watching this and you haven't seen that video already, I really don't want anyone to get offended. So any Uruguayans who are watching this, go watch that video first because I do want everyone to know that there are a lot of positives to living here and I do love so many things about Uruguay. So I don't want anyone who either lives here to get offended or anyone who is planning to move here to get discouraged from this video. But at the same time, I want to keep it really real and honest. And these are some things that I have genuinely found quite difficult about living here. And it would have been nice to know them before we moved. I'm not saying that it would have changed my decisions. I don't think it would have stopped me from wanting to have this experience. But at the same time, yeah, it just would have been nice to know before we packed up our lives and moved here. And finally, I am making this video at the start of 2021. So we've been here throughout the global pandemic that happened in 2020. So if you're watching this in a few years time and everything has cleared up, then maybe a lot of these things will no longer be relevant. Also, I am aware that a lot of the things I'm about to talk about are in the process of either the people wanting them to change or the government actually being in the process of trying to update things. So hopefully in a few months time or a few years time at least living here will be a little bit easier particularly for foreigners like myself who are used to certain things that you just can't get here yet but without further ado i'm going to get on into the video as always all my social media will be linked down below if you want to go check out any of my um, instagram accounts tiktok for more short form content as well as my other channel maddie luca it will be linked down below and up in the cards if you want to go check out my more like fashion and lifestyle based videos but over here we talk just about like daily life uruguay travel all that kind of thing so yeah let's get into the first thing that i don't want to say i hate but i'm probably going to title this video the things i hate about uruguay but it's really more accurately the things that are annoying or frustrating. So the biggest one that kind of sums up a lot of these other points is that life here is pretty old school. And what I mean by that is, it's kind of hard to sum up in like a short sentence, but essentially life here just feels very backwards in a lot of ways and then really strangely progressive in other ways. Like for example, in last week's video, I talked about the fact that marijuana is legal here. And that, another thing I actually didn't mention, which is great about living here, is the um, free healthcare for citizens. The fact that it was one of the first countries in the world to um, legalize same-sex marriage. So there are all of these amazing, very progressive things about the country. But at the same time, other aspects are really behind. For example, in the banking situation, it was not that difficult for us to open a bank account, but it was just the little things to go along with that. For example, the card that we got given from the bank didn't have a chip in it. 
and we just were so used to having a chip that I was kind of like, excuse me. So we couldn't use the card online. We had to go back and specifically request that our bank account was able to be used online and that our, we could get a card with a chip in it. So we could do like tap, tap to pay, which tap to pay here really isn't a thing like um, pay wave kind of thing. You, it's not really common here. Those sorts of things just don't really exist. Same thing with like paying with my phone. I used to do that all the time with Australia. You can't really do that here. You can't just like load your cards onto your phone because not not everywhere. In fact, most businesses will not have like the pay wave, pay pass kind of like scanners, receivers. So you can't do those sorts of payment things. Which again, to some people, it's really not a big deal. But to other people, if you're used to that, it's just something that you're going to have to re get used to. Or another thing is with like paying bills and stuff, we have to take our physical like bill that will get delivered to our house, our paper bill, take that to an like Abbey tab or um, I don't even know what the, the centers are called. I'll have Alejandro when he's editing this put like some pictures of the business up on the screen here. But you have to physically take your bill to this place, scan it, pay it there. Usually pay it with cash, I believe. You can't even pay with like your card, you have to take cash out pay it with cash and then that like pays your bills. We do the same thing with our rent. Whereas again, back in Australia, everything was just directly debited from my account. And you can set up some of those processes here, but only if you have a credit card. And we do not have a credit card. I've never had a credit card. I'm 25 years old and I've never had a credit card, which in Australia, again, wasn't really that big of an issue. And trying to get a credit card here is complicated because again, I'm working on social media. So my like payment is all kind of all over the place. It's hard to keep track of and it's getting paid into my Australian bank account, not into my Uruguayan one. So it just adds like an extra level of difficulty when trying to prove your income to someone. So that's a story for another time. But yeah, so a lot of things here are just very old school when they maybe don't necessarily need to be. Same thing with government websites. I found trying to look up things around like importing goods, which we'll get to in a second. The government websites are very difficult to find and they're very, dare I say, like 2000s looking. It's very much like you built the website 15 years ago and then haven't done anything to it. They're not, they're not very mobile friendly. They're not very user friendly. It's difficult to find the information you want. And I'm not even saying that as an English speaker, like Alejandro also struggles to find information. So it's not a language barrier thing. It's just a technology and getting things updated, which again, I know that a lot of businesses and a lot of people here are trying to update things. So who knows in the future, maybe this will be solved or at least improved on. But we have personally found that this was a little bit um, like it just kind of caught us off guard certain things and I'm sure there are so many more examples of the old school nature of living here that I'm just not thinking of off the top of my head but that is the main thing about living here and I know that it's not like a huge first world western country or anything so like I don't it's not that I was expecting it to be the same as Australia or be the same as the United States or the same as England or one of these other like really big modern you know advanced countries or anything but there were some things that really just surprised me now point number two is the sort of karen attitude if you are on social media and have been watching tiktok you know exactly what i'm talking about but if you've seen last week's video you may have heard me talk about um life on the beach how when people the sun comes out their body shame just disappears and they're wearing their tiny bikinis and taking their shirts off and like you know it's everyone's having fun in the sun but that really only exists on the beach and right by the beach. The second you move away from the beach, even like one block away from the beach, it's different. Like if I'm walking around in like bike shorts and a crop top, I get looked at. And I feel like even some kinds of leggings or shorts just are kind of not not seen as appropriate clothing, which I feel like a lot of people might agree with other places, but here I feel like it's especially like prevalent. Like I really feel looked at and judged when I'm wearing certain things and people don't really wear that many fun, bright, exciting things. The younger generation are definitely trying. Like I've seen a few people walking around who clearly are like in full like e-girl, like wigs and like tutus and all that kind of thing. Like they're going for it. 
but in general i even made a tiktok about it and i had a lot of comments saying that the uruguayan um or the classic uruguayan dress is very like gray um and just it's not that vibrant south american picture you might have in your head like it's definitely not the same as like you know carnival in brazil or even like mexican culture is very different than uruguayan they're a little bit more conservative um so yeah that's something to keep in mind again no one's ever said anything to me about it it's more just like the vibe i've gotten and then when i've mentioned this in my tiktoks other local like uruguayans have agreed with me and said like hey like yeah like we get it it's just something that happens hopefully it'll change soon but it it is it is the reality that exists right now. Now this next one I'm gonna just brush over really quickly because it's not really that important, but there's a lack of big like department store things. They don't really exist here, which is nice in a way. Like I'm happy to support smaller businesses, but the convenience of that is nice. For example, there's no like Ikea for furniture. Um, there's no like Target or Kmart or like big kind of stores where you can go to and get everything you need they don't really exist here um the closest thing you have is like the supermarkets like the fresh market disco fresh market that has like you can get some furniture things there you can get like beanies and scarves and things and you can get your fruit and veg and stuff like that but it and they have a few homewarsy things but it's not like a target um same with the tiena inglesa at montevideo shopping you can get like some clothing items there and like Christmas trees and stuff like that, as well as your groceries, but it's not not quite the same. You, there's no department stores. It's really more specialty stores. Like you can get so many different specialty stores, which is nice, but it does make shopping a little bit more of a task because you have to go to so many different different places to get what you need. Okay, so back to the buying things online. That is a process and I think I'm going to have to make a whole other video about this because I did mention it previously and it just, there's so much I could say about this, but essentially if you import something outside of the country, you have to pay a 60% tax on that item and then also import fees and also fees for like the processing of the item. So you get three imports a year per person, per like ID card essentially for free use. I mean, they're not really for free. You just don't have to pay like the processing fees. I feel like you still have to pay the 60% import tax on the, so 60% of the worth of the item you have to pay to like the Uruguayan import people. So I understand wanting to support local businesses and wanting to encourage people to support locally. But when it comes to certain items that you just physically cannot get locally or even Alejandro, he is six foot nine. And the average size man here is probably five foot five. So finding clothes that fit him in Uruguay is physically impossible. So obviously anything for him, we need to buy online. Same with shoes, clothes, and a lot of things that I want. I mean, I can fit into clothes and stuff here, but other things that I want like hair extensions or like weird things like that, that I'm just used to being able to buy online. If I do that now, I have to pay import fees on top of it. So that is just annoying. It's a hassle. It takes a lot longer because things go through customs. You have to go through aduanas, which are like the middlemen who kind of handle the import stuff. It's a whole big process. It's a bit annoying. I didn't know this before I moved here and I probably would have brought some more skincare and makeup with me because that's the other point is that makeup is prohibited from being imported. Same with skincare, most liquids, any kind of food items. So I'm assuming that includes like, um, like sports supplements and stuff like that. Like I normally buy my protein powder online. I love to buy like vegan protein powder and BCAAs and stuff like that, but you, I just haven't bought that here because I'm just assuming it will get confiscated because I would imagine that that would count as a food item or some kind of powder and I just feel like that process would go badly. So you can't even order through Amazon. You can order through a brand called Tienda Mia who are like the middlemen again. They import through Amazon or eBay or Walmart and they import them for you and ship it to you and handle all like the annoying stuff, but you still have to pay the taxes. So you're still paying the 60%. It still counts as one of your three imports of the year. So you're not getting away with it like any cheaper. It just is more easy. So yeah, and then the makeup is just like not possible. 
so for me it's quite difficult to find makeup the only like high quality makeup i've found is mac cosmetics um so that is great but they're not a cookie free brand which is something i normally like to support but they're the only local brand or the only brand locally that i can find that have my pale skin shade so that's just some, a compromise that i've had to make with myself okay moving on internet speeds ours is honestly fairly slow we're supposed to be on the second to highest speed we are using that with wi-fi so i'm sure if we had a cable connection that would be faster and we're with the um the company or the provider Antel. we need to get them to come out and check it again we've had a few issues surface level it's all good and last time we did have an issue we called up and they came out and fixed it pretty soon but we were also signing up right when the pandemic was hitting so that took a little longer and we had a few issues getting it set up but again that was mostly pandemic -y coronavirus nonsense not so much with them as a business but yeah we do have to get them to come out and recheck our modem because we're definitely not getting the speed that we were promised so whether that's just because we're not using a like cable or if that's something at their end i don't know we're not sure but wi-fi speeds are definitely could be improved so keep that in mind <laughs> okay things here are just expensive like weirdly expensive i did hear before we moved here that uruguay was one of the more expensive countries to live in south america and that kind of is the price you pay for it being having a really good quality of life comparatively to some of its neighboring countries like brazil and argentina like there are so many great things about here for example like the healthcare system free education you can go to university for free all those kinds of things are amazing but at the same time food is expensive cars are super expensive we don't have a car because we haven't found one that was within our budget yet so cars are expensive essentially anything imported so that includes all electrical items appliances even some foods, so all of the gluten-free foods that we buy for Alejandro, they're pretty much all imported from Brazil. And even importing from Brazil tends to raise the prices. There's just a lot of things cost a lot more than they should. Or actually a good example is with electronics. So the new PlayStation has just come out, PlayStation 5. And in the US, that costs about 500 US dollars. Here, on sale, it costs 1,000 and something US dollars. So twice the price just to get it. And there's no other alternatives. You can't do anything about that. Normally the people here would just fly elsewhere to buy their stuff and then come back. Like if you were going on a holiday, you would, you know, during that holiday, you would do some shopping, buy all your makeup, buy all your electronics and then come back to your wife because it's just so much cheaper and that is actually our plan currently because we're looking at upgrading my laptop i have an old macbook air i think from 2016 and it's a pain in the ass to edit on and we want to get the new macbook pro but again here it'll cost us about over four thousand dollars to get something that we could get in new york where alejandro's sister lives for like one and a half thousand dollars so it's just the inflation is ridiculous. It's so expensive. So if you're planning on moving here and then upgrading any technology, do it before you get here or plan trips out of the country to purchase anything like that. Like right now we are hoping to fly to New York really soon to visit Alejandro's sister. And again, buy things like my makeup that I am running out of or buy clothes for Alejandro or buy our laptop that we can save more than 50% on by buying it outside of the country. So the cost of things here is really expensive, but then you go to a local fruit and veg shop and everything there is dirt cheap. So some things are really cheap if it's like grown locally and sold locally by small businesses, but anything imported or sold by like a big company, like Apple here is crazy, is just like 10 times the price that it needed to be. Okay, so this next point touches on the like aesthetics of the country because I mentioned in last week's episode that I love Uruguay, that everything is so pretty and beautiful and like almost tropical looking and it's just, it's very different than what I'm used to. But if you look closely and I'll insert a few clips here, I've taken them when I go for like jogs along the, like the beachfront 
everything looks stunning until you look closely and see all of the trash. There is so much litter and it breaks my heart. Again, in Adelaide, you would just never see this much litter on the floor. And especially during COVID, if it got worse, because people were not wanting to go out and like touch things because they were worried about the germs. But I want to invest in some like heavy duty gloves and go out maybe even once a month and just do like beach cleanups because they do clean up the sand now that it's summertime. In winter, I feel like it they let it go quite bad and like the sand would just be honestly quite rancid there would be like dead fish on the sand in the mornings and just rubbish here and there and it was just not only is it ugly but it breaks my heart for the environment knowing that that came out of the river or is about to go into the river i did hear that a lot of this comes from upstream so a lot of the other countries are also to blame because they are littering and then it's getting washed down the river to uruguay but the fact that it's also like not just on like the beachfront means that it's also the citizens here are just littering. Or oh, we've seen so many times when dogs, like someone's walking their dog and the dog poops and the owner will just leave the poop there. And it's so common. So you really have to be looking where you're going. Also, as far as looking where you're going, I also mentioned this last week, but the pavements here can be really uneven. I just can't even imagine, like there are so many just like missing pavers or like lips like again a few days ago we were walking along and this younger couple again a few days ago we were walking along and this young couple luckily they were young were walking along in front of us just a few meters in front of us and there was this like there was this path and then it kind of stopped when the next path started and it was in like next to a bus yard and there was this little like lip like this high of cement that just kind of was going along but then just kind of like stopped towards the the end of the like where the ocean was so her boyfriend was next to her closer to the ocean and he just walked and it was like all fine but where she was walking like less than a meter away from him there was this like small lip so she obviously doesn't see it because it's this exact same color as the floor it's all just cement hits her toe falls over grazes her knee i mean she was fine and luckily she was younger but if she was like not even just if she was 90 but if she was like 60 50 like you could really injure yourself if you fall onto cement like that's not good for anyone. Like not only are you gonna rip up your skin, but you could seriously do some damage if you, you know, like it's, it's just not safe a lot of the time. So you're gonna be looking where you're going. Okay, lastly, again, touching on food. There's kind of limited food regarding like vegan fast foods or um, gluten-free options. I find there's a lot of vegan products. Like you can get so many different vegan cheeses and soy milks and all that kind of stuff. But then when you go to like order like fast food or something, um they do have like burger king here and burger king used to have the rebel whopper so the like beyond beef patties but then they stopped doing them i guess not enough people were ordering them so like the demand versus like the price of the burgers it just wasn't enough so they stopped doing those so that sucked they do have like a few specific like vegan um like restaurants that do deliver so that's great but it's even more difficult we found for gluten-free products, trying to order gluten-free food on like Petit Dostoja, which is the like Uber Eats equivalent. It's really hard to find gluten-free products. They also often don't label food as gluten-free in the supermarket, it'll be quite easy, but when you're ordering from a menu, you have to really ask a lot of questions. They don't label the menus as being gluten-free. So that's something that you have to keep an eye out for. And finally, there's kind of, this weird attitude around helping people and we really struggled to like settle in and get someone to really help us out with like certain things i feel like alejandro kind of tried to explain this in our um like six months in uruguay video so i'll link that down below if you want to go check that out but the way he's explained it to me is that for example you're asking a local for directions if they don't know the answer to your question instead of telling you that they don't know the answer they'll be like oh it's down this way and then you go there so essentially they'll be so overly polite they don't want to let you down by saying no i don't know the answer they will try to give you an answer even if they don't know the answer which actually is really not helpful whereas if they would just say no sorry i don't know the answer but maybe you could head in here and ask them instead they will just like kind of blabber on and give you like like a fake answer 
or I know his sister said when we were calling her about um, like Christmas plans and like things getting cancelled, she was saying that Uruguayans like they hate confrontation. So instead of like telling you directly, they will kind of just go around like around the problem until they kind of have like vaguely told you what they were trying to say but not really told you what they wanted to say so it's this weird politeness and helpfulness that actually is very unhelpful i guess at least it's just very different from like me like i'm very upfront if i don't like something i will tell the person to their face because i feel like honesty is the best policy and i'm i don't like too much subtlety i feel like that just doesn't get you anywhere whereas here you really have to be subtle because if you are too direct with someone they can take that as really offensive so again that's what um his sister has tried to explain so yeah it's just like this weird like roundabout way of people like trying to help you but actually not really helping you at all so yeah that can be fun and challenging to navigate so yeah, that is the end of the video. Again, I hope this didn't sound like I was complaining too much because I really am enjoying my time here and I hope that that comes across. And if you are thinking, wow, she just had a lot of negative things to say, please go and watch last week's video because I promise I was a lot more positive there. I was drinking from my, my coffee from my little Uruguay mug and I'm very happy we moved here. There's just some things that could be improved on. <laughs> And of course, all my social media will be linked down below if you want to go follow on any of my Instagrams, my personal, my business for like health and fitness and nutrition content. I will even have my TikTok or Alejandro's business photography um, Instagram and his website linked in the description box below if you want to go check that out. And of course, give the video a thumbs up if you want to see more Uruguay videos and comment down below any questions you might have about life here, things you want to see, video ideas that you want me to make. I am working on a budgeting video as we speak, so I'm tracking all of our expenses for this month and that should be out sometime in February. But if you want to make sure you see those videos, of course, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you are notified whenever we upload. So that's it from me for today. Come back next Wednesday for a brand new vlog and remember to keep exploring. <laughs> Bye. Main things that I love about the country, about living here, and about my life in Montevideo. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, or if you are new here, then hi, hello, welcome. My name is Maddie, and 10 months ago, I moved all the way from Australia with my then fiance, now husband, to Uruguay. 